I really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. So if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And even, you know, if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. And thanks again for listening. Hi guys, welcome back to Why Not. I'm going to do a solo episode today where I'm going to talk all about consistency and how that is really the key to get to where you want to be. And I'm going to tell you about things that people do that stop them being consistent and things we can do to try and be more consistent. And I'm going to stop saying the word consistent because this is what the episode's all about. So, hope you enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back to Why Not. So, it's me today to talk to you guys about a word that I think isn't used enough in the fitness industry or maybe you're not like maybe we don't use it enough ourselves in the fitness industry and it is not motivation because that's a big word that everyone likes to throw around and blame that for the reason that they can't train won't train aren't training can't stay on them track or whatever motivation is a big one but however <clears throat> I'm actually going to talk to you today about consistency and this is the thing that I find is the biggest problem when it comes to people getting to their goals okay nobody wants to be consistent nobody is consistent they come for a couple of weeks they disappear they try something for another couple of weeks they disappear they make a little bit of progress they give up because they're not happening as quick as they can and the real thing that they are lacking is not motivation it's not the right plan it's not well they are lacking patience but it is consistency and anybody that you follow or you admire or you look up to may it be health wise may it be business wise may it be whatever you're looking of they have one thing in common and they are consistently doing what they need to do to get to where they need to do. And that's why I think it's really important to talk about this because people think that they need motivation to start. So we get that a lot. We like, I need motivation. I'm not motivated. I can't start because I'm not motivated. X, Y, Z is the reason, blah, blah, blah. And what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the time in order to obtain motivation, you need to start action first so you don't need motivation to begin acting you need act to begin acting to gain motivation because what happens is if you take action and you start working on this you will start to see okay I feel different here I I'm making a change things are a little bit better this same in this sense and then you're gonna go oh I want to do that I want to keep going I want to see how it goes I want to see how it's happening or you know is it going to change um is this going to go away and then suddenly you find yourself wanting to do it because by the action you're driving yourself forward each time instead of sitting there waiting for the motivation to come because it's never ever ever going to come um you know and they say like well it will come but like it's not going to stay there unless you keep going and uh pushing through what you're doing um i was going to say it can be like dublin bus it can come and go but like you know dublin bus is very reliable right now so you know if you can't even expect them to appear how can you expect motivation to dive out of the trees and suddenly tell you that, hey, you're ready to go, it's your turn. Um, and I think there's a couple of reasons that we don't, we like we have problems with consistency. Um, you know, it's, a, it's, I don't know, like obviously I will always complain about social media and how they tell you this, that and the other can be done in this amount of weeks. And I think, I think it's really important to realise that especially when it comes to your health that it's not something that happens in six weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks it's something that you it doesn't have an end date so while yes you can drop a dress size in whatever amount of time that's completely normal but if you go back to what you were doing you're going to go back to the original dress size so you know a lot of these fitness things will sell you weight loss in a certain time and either you get it and then you finish and you're great that's the end date it's done or you don't get it and you think it was a waste of time and you're like I'm never going to do that again so either way they don't work and the thing about it is when it comes to your health like you know 
we need to stop looking at health and fitness as a number on the scales or a certain size or you know because there is that element of you can be healthy at different sizes you like you know some people who are like you know people assume the skinnier the leaner you are the better you are you could they could have a really bad eating disorder and everyone's lauding them whereas you could have someone who is mildly overweight and all their health markers are perfect and people think that they're the bad the problem like you know there is those two extremes so you have to remember you know you can't judge whether or not someone's healthy by looking at them 90 percent of the time so if we're looking at our long-term health what can we do to make that improve so this could be involving you losing weight this could be involving you doing strength training because maybe you are in your late 40s maybe you know you could have gone through menopause you could be just aging and once we hit a certain point in our life say for instance women in particular are more prone to the likes of osteopenia and osteoporosis which is brittle bones if you do strength training this improves your bone bone density now you have a way of combating the chances of your osteoporosis or osteopenia so this is a situation where you know you're not necessarily doing it for weight loss but you're doing it to improve your quality of life going forward another thing as we age after we get past i think 35 is a sarcopenia is a thing that happens to everybody and that is the breakdown of muscle how do we come on that by training so these are reasons that you know consistent training will really help you because you are no longer going for just that uh, weight loss goal you actually are you know you want to improve your quality of life as you age you want to be able to keep up with your kids all these different things you want to be able to run after the dog when they stolen the remote any of these any of these reasons um will be more likely to get us keep us going and keeping consistent because there is a benefit that isn't just an aesthetic or a weight loss or you know um i'm actually just after doing a podcast someone and we talked about like weight loss and it was really he put it really well he says like you know you don't look at someone and go jesus you look great 65 kilos because you've no idea what people weigh uh but yet we tie so much of our self worth to the to the weighing scales and what it shows whereas it doesn't it's just a unit of measurement it doesn't say that you're healthy it doesn't say that you know you know this you can run 5k or it doesn't say that you um you aren't going to drop dead tomorrow i don't know sorry that got very dark i'm just trying to say like you know the weight is not a marker a lot of the time of health yes there are certain situations where it can be and that goes both ways again like i said before because someone is very lean doesn't mean they're healthy there could be someone who is severely underweight because they have an eating disorder and the same thing there could be someone who is severely overweight because they have an eating disorder again just because they are overweight again it's not a case of you're just lazy there are other eating disorders that cause these issues so we have to be fair about that too so first thing we want to do is think about our health as a no end date thing your health is going to take you through your whole life so six week programs are not going to change your health because they're just going to give you an end date and when you do the end date and you stop, you might go back to what you're doing. So maybe next time you're setting a goal, let's help ourselves keep consistent. Let's work towards something that isn't health or weight or dress size related. Let's think about something that you would improve your quality of life now and even later. Um, another thing that we have that really sucks for this uh, kind of keeping consistency is this shiny object syndrome and i could go online now and find 10 different diets 10 different workout plans i couldn't find anything that will tell me that i will get the results that i want right now or quickly and easily and we bounce from the shiny object shiny object never leaving anything enough time to see if it actually works and that is like you're never going to make progress if you keep bouncing from one thing to the other and just expecting that to be your new thing so it's a it's a big issue that we struggle with um 
there will always be a new diet there will always be a new workout plan like you know every you've seen the different fads have come through the years different workout type classes there's been spin classes there's been you know the heated cardio classes there's been trx there's been kettlebells and they all go through phases and yes they're still around and still very very useful but you don't see trx studios anymore you don't you do see spin studios but it's that kind of thing like there's always going to be a new thing and people will jump from one thing to the other and get great results when they start it but then they give up because they get bored of it because they didn't actually like it because they only did it because it was new and shiny and great and this is the problem we need to even it doesn't have to be like a gym based exercise if you are looking for something for your health like you know you get into something that you enjoy you could be doing rowing you could be playing football you could be going to a dance class but the main thing is you keep going to it and if you keep going to it you're more likely to get results long term and then you're going to enjoy it again you'd be motivated to go if you're going with a couple of friends it's your laugh you go on a tuesday you know you go play football with the lads or you go to your dance class with with, with the girls or the guys wherever you want to go with. you know all these things are going to keep you going back because you enjoy it you look forward to doing it this is a problem we keep trying to force ourselves to do these things we hate because we're told it's the best way for fat loss or something like that and there is literally only so long you can do stuff you don't like you know you can push yourself through mentally to do it you can come you can be bored you can dislike it you can do it again you can come back but there's only so long before you do it so you need to find an element of something that you actually enjoy in order to help like keep this consistency element again i'm talking consistency we're not talking about a short term we need to keep hammering this home that consistency is going to make a difference in your life uh, it's the only way you're going to make a difference because you bounce from these shiny objects you keep going from one thing you hate to another the list is getting longer of stuff you don't like so that's a load of stuff you're never going to do um, you probably have memberships to all these different things and if you just found something that you enjoyed or you know like you might say oh I used to enjoy say for instance going salsa dancing but I don't do that anymore and you know oh I can't do it well go go back to it like yeah you won't know the steps but like you'll have an instructor you'll make friends there because people always make friends in these places they don't think they will but you're all there for the same reason and that's the the great thing about it is you know you have something in common already everyone in the say salsa dancing class likes salsa if you join a football team or a ga team or whatever they all enjoy that sport that's why they're doing it so there's a social element too and that'll help you come keep coming back you know if you have a friend it'll go with you it's great when you're first starting off if not also fine you know you will make friends there there's plenty of people who've come to our gym and made friends i talk about this sometimes um i've talked about it before it's very common and that's what we want we want to be in this environment that we look forward to going to now do not get me wrong everybody will not want to do stuff 100% of the time things will come up you might have a bad week in work you might be overtired there could be any list of things that you will not get to your class that week you will get to something but that's not the reason to give up especially if you're in an environment that you enjoy you'll just go okay I missed this week but I'll be back whereas when we have ourselves in these six week programs or whatever that we're just hell bent on going towards this one goal you know you might feel like oh if you miss one fuck it there's no point doing it again or you don't have a great class on you because you are tired you're like oh, i'm wasting my time why am i doing this whereas you have to understand and i say this before as well uh, we are human <laughs> we are not robots and some days are going to be bad and some days are going to be good and i like to say this all the time as well you know the workout you've done or the walk you went on and uh, no matter how shitty it is is better than the one that never happened so if we are sitting ourselves up and going to something we enjoy we're less likely to dip out on it if um you know we're maybe a bit tired that week you know like you never know sometimes you're you're bollocks going to something and then you have so much fun by the end of it you're like oh i don't know why i never wanted to go and you're the endorphins are rushing and you're great and sometimes you just drag yourself through it, but you feel better you went because it's better than you know not doing it at all and again we have to be we have this thing as well that we you know as i'm saying before you miss something doesn't mean you've broken a cycle you can go the next day you can go the next week you can go you know 
it doesn't have to be perfect and that's a thing about life life is imperfect you know uh, consistency doesn't mean having to do five days a week every week consistency means it could mean you get three in one week but you didn't give up on the whole week because you missed one that's the kind of thing we're thinking like you know you have this stuff you never miss a Monday sometimes you're knackered and you have to miss a Monday and that's completely normal you know it's more important that you rest sometimes than going train because if you're not well or if you push yourself through these times you might make yourself not well and then you miss more than if you never actually went that day you know you could be a case of I take a rest this day I go Tuesday and Friday or you don't take a rest and you end up sick for the rest of the week so you miss Tuesday and Friday which actually is better going Monday missing the rest of the week or missing Monday and going the rest of the week you've actually got two more sessions you've got an extra session in if you take that one off so it's worth thinking about that you know as I say consistency does not mean you have to do it every day it just means you are regularly doing it and listening to your body when you need to take breaks stuff like that is completely normal um and another thing i think as well is we need to unfollow these sometimes you need to unfollow people who make you feel bad about yourself because if you're going to a gym or an exercise class and you're having fun and then you're opening up social media and you're seeing some girl or some lad who's absolutely shredded lying on a beach and you're like oh why did i waste my time i'll never look like them like what's the point of following them do they bring you any value do you just get to look at them and make yourself sad every time because there's no point following them then you know you need to remove these people who are making your life feel inadequate you know they're traveling the world they're doing this they're doing that like whereas you're at home on a rainy wednesday after coming home from the gym and it's in dublin and you have to make the dinner and you're like oh why did i even bother you know these people we don't want them in our lives we don't need them in the lives. you don't know them most of the time and if you do know them they probably won't notice if you mute them <laughs> sometimes you need to remove this because again this can be just as detrimental to being how consistent you are because if you look at them and go well i'll never look like that what's the point and then you give up or you keep going you're not intending to look like them but they make you feel bad about yourself so you don't see them anymore and you keep going and suddenly you manage a press up or suddenly you've done something you've never done before and you're like yes you know you this is more important to you than them they don't care they don't notice you so remove them from your life and this is the thing as well about it we need to do it for ourselves not for other people too many people join the gym look 90% of personal trainers who become personal trainers become that because of their insecure as well they're already in the gym because they're insecure um so they're like I'm going to teach other insecure people how to not be insecure because I'm not insecure and a lot of reason people join the gym is insecurity or starts exercise and the thing is again this is why I'm trying to go back to having an alternate health related goal as opposed to just doing it to lose weight because if you do that you're more likely to keep going you know if you're doing it for yourself not because there's an event on because you get a lot of people who come for an event and then you never see them again or you you want to look a certain way or you think you should look a certain way or someone said something bad about you and now you feel bad about yourself so you feel like you have to come all these reasons aren't enough to get you going if you want to go to like be stronger if you want to go to you know reverse the potential causes of osteopenia if you want to you know I said you chase your kids or catch the dog when he runs off the remote all these reasons are more likely to keep you coming back over those reasons I was saying before of someone making you feel bad so if you're coming in with something for yourself that you have a goal that you want to do for you it's going to be so much more beneficial to you than it would be if they're um sorry if if you're doing it for someone else so this is always a, an issue that I find um and here's the thing about consistency uh it's not sexy it's not fun well it's fun like training is fun when you get like things that you didn't expect you were going to be able to reach like new milestones and they're really good when you first start but they get farther and farther away when you're old, when you're training a long time so that's really boring but basically what you have to do is you have to keep rinsing and repeating until it becomes like part of your life so 
it's so dull it's so boring your life doesn't change overnight but like one day you'll be picking up your gym bag and walking out the door and going Jesus didn't even think about that now you know or you'll be picking a certain meal and you'll be having that instead or you know for once you'll be like I'm gonna have the burger and I'm not gonna care about it and that rinse and repeat over and over again eventually locks in and then you realize other things in your life that have changed that now you aren't um you know, like I said you're not counting all your calories. You're, you know, you're happy. You can buy a different dress size. You did a pull up the other day. All these little things that, like, if you look back and look at it, you go, oh, I couldn't do that a year ago, or I couldn't, like, and it is that long, by the way. <laughs> if you want to get health goals, you need to be working more than a year. It's not six, twelve, you know, eight weeks. It is six months, a year, eighteen months. These is when you really see the difference and. When it's part of your life, the alarm goes off, you get up, you go, you know, you have your gym bag packed for the next day. That is when you know, I suppose, that you have reached to a, to a top level consistency. <laughs> I don't know what way to describe it, but that's what we want to see. Like, we want to see this as repetitive, repetitive, repetitive until it's no longer feels like you have to, it, it's, it's part of your life, as I said. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out how to word that, but it's just so dull and boring that nobody wants that because you know it's not as exciting as a shiny object you want a shiny object but really what you need is the boring rock beside it and that's what's going to be the difference in you finally getting that goal and consistently staying at that goal you know um and the thing like you'll get as well if you are doing this i get it myself you'll always have people telling you oh you shouldn't be doing that or you sure you should do that and blah, 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 you know one thing is don't ever take advice from people you wouldn't switch places with like you know the people who comment on me lifting heavy weights are oftentimes not as fit do not enjoy it like I do um my granny's an awful one for it um but what I'm saying is you know if you wouldn't switch place on them why would you take advice from do not take advice from people who are going to tell you oh you shouldn't eat that you shouldn't do that are they a qualified nutritionist probably not have they done a lot of diets over the years? Yeah, that doesn't make you a qualified nutritionist, right? You shouldn't take any advice when it comes to food with them. A lot of the time when it comes to lifting as well. Like, you know, there is obviously bad eggs in nutrition and fitness industry as well. But obviously, if you have a coach, um, if you are going to go into coaching or as in get a coach, please listen to what they have to say. Um, obviously, if it sounds incredibly dodgy, do not listen to them. But don't be going and asking other people online. Like I've had people who have asked me questions about stuff online and I've been like, okay, right, but have you discussed this with your coach or have you discussed it with a physio? And they're like, no, they've given me this, but I don't know, should I do this instead? And I'm like, well, no, they have your, they are your case study. Like I'm a person, random person on, on, on the internet. Do not ask me for my opinion over the person you are paying money to. Um, and you'll get that. People are like, because it's taking too long or you're not getting the results you wanted straight away like Joe Blogg said on and he's got a thousand hundred thousand followers a million followers or something just because they have a lot of followers doesn't mean that they're right doesn't mean that they're qualified you know if you have any questions or queries with your coach you should be able to discuss that with them ask them why this is the process they should be able to explain to you the process and why it's like that if it's taking too long in your eyes it's probably just taking how long it should take because we always forget when we go into these kind of phases that it didn't happen overnight like you didn't get to where you are overnight this was consistent habits that you built up over days weeks months probably years it's probably years let's be honest and you've been consistent in these habits and that's where it's gotten you to where you don't want to be now and you can't just flick a switch and they'll all be gone and you're back to where you wanted to be um because that's not how it works so i think we need to remember that because we always look at this we never look back and how far we came to be to where we are and that's included when in a positive sense like I'm talking about like you know if you've done something that you're really proud about like you don't look back and go how long it took you to get to where you are but also in a negative sense if you are overweight or unhealthy or whatever way you want you portray yourself it didn't happen overnight you didn't just flip a switch and end up in this scenario so you need to look back and go okay well theoretically let's put it this way 
If it took you that long to get to where you are now, it'll probably take you that long to get to where you want to be. And that could be your previous uh, shape, fitness level. So be ready for that. And if you're worried or wondering why it's taking so long, or maybe you think the stuff that they're doing is a little bit extreme and you don't need to go that intense so hard, ask them. Ask them, don't ask strangers on the internet. If something doesn't seem right to you, they should be explain, able to explain to you why that is the case, why we're doing it this way. And if they can't, then maybe question them, okay? So I'm not going to say that any coaches are wrong, but there are some ones who, you know, they don't know any better maybe. Maybe they do know better and they just don't care. It's hard to know, but that's why you have to have the conversation. So a communication with your coach is so important. Um, because again it can help you with that consistency element if you know why you're doing it because we we like to be just told you get a lot of this as well like yeah people just want a meal plan just want to be told to do this this and this um but you're not learning anything there and it's grand you can do it again for a certain amount of time but at the end of it what are you going to do then where do you go do you continue on doing that or are you bored of eating rice every day rice and chicken you know probably bored you're probably going to want to do something different so when we know why we're doing it not just how we're doing it it can make things a lot easier and a lot easier for us to function and keep going at and you know help us achieve where we want to be so i think with that i am going to leave you guys this was a little chat on consistency this literally can go to anything i know i bring it back to fitness all the time but if you're struggling with keeping consistent anything even reading a book you know you can look at these different things and figure out why you know the reason the shiny object thing could be your phone there's different apps on your phone to stop you reading why aren't you reading take 10 minutes a day to read 10 pages you don't read a chapter every night you don't have a book read in a week break it down make it easier all of these things i've talked about can be applied back to anything and a lot of the time if we are struggling with anything the main thing we are struggling with is consistency if we stay consistent things will fall into place better. I know this, I don't have this problem with training, but other parts of my life I really, really struggle with. So this is how I know I am that person. I am the procrastinator. I am the person who wonders why I'm not going there or why I'm not motivated to do anything. And I remember, oh yeah, because you're not doing it. Um, so just, just if anyone was thinking, oh yeah, that's fine, you know, you train all the time um it's it's not a part of my life where i struggle with uh it's it's other parts of my life where i struggle with that kind of thing but with that i am going to love yous and leaves you i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope you took something from it and maybe it made you question a few things and make you reflect on things you could do be doing better and i hope you enjoyed it i think i already said that but if you want to find me again chrissy h fitness on instagram or my equestrian side which i'm a little bit more active on these days is at strong in the saddle underscore on instagram and at strong the saddle with no underscore in on tiktok and you will find my website for any coaching inquiries or you know anything like that www.chrissyhawkins.com i hope you enjoyed this episode and have a great day that was a really cool sign off wasn't it Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never-ending question. What makes people say why not?